From lavish Caribbean vacations to extravagant birthday gifts, William and Kate's children live an extraordinary life. Here's what it's like to be rich, famous, and a royal, while barely out of diapers. I, I hope we'll you know, be able to have a happy family ourselves. The long line of royal tradition around childbirth meant that royal babies were typically born at Buckingham Palace. However, this all changed in the 1970s when Princess Anne gave birth to her children at St Mary's Hospital in London. Princess Diana later chose the same location when she gave birth to Prince William. When Catherine, Princess of Wales, gave birth to her children, she also chose the Lindo Wing at St Mary's Hospital. The medical team involved in the birth of Kate Middleton and Prince William's children was immense. Gynaecologist and obstetrician Professor Tiong Ji Tio was just one of the 23 people who comprised Kate's medical unit, according to Hello magazine. He told the outlet, We had a huge team, anything that could possibly go wrong. We had a team of people behind each speciality. Kate struggled with hyperemesis gravidarum, an extreme case of morning sickness, with each of her pregnancies. With hospitalization being common in such cases, Kate's pregnancy were reportedly challenging experiences. I wonder whether George has in any sense started to pick up on the fact that he's not part of an ordinary family. Prince George knows what his future will look like and that his destiny is to become the King of England. However, his parents, Prince William and Princess Kate, are walking an unusually fine line for child rearing, which is this, how to impress upon their eldest son and other children what it means to be a royal without causing stress. Royal biographer Katie Nicholl wrote about Kate Middleton and Prince William's apparent dilemma in her 2022 book, The New Royals. She wrote they are raising their children, particularly Prince George, with an awareness of who he is and the role he will inherit, but they are keen not to weigh them down with a sense of duty. In a somewhat sassy fashion, George reportedly used his family clout in some shutdowns at school. Nicol wrote in her book, George understands he will one day be king, and as a little boy sparred with friends at school, outdoing his peers with the killer line, my dad will be king so you better watch out. While George George might be using his royal family as leverage at school, William and Kate do their best to keep their children's childhoods as normal as possible. On a February 2020 appearance on the Happy Mum, Happy Baby podcast, Kate explained when she felt happiest. I'm with my family outside in the countryside and we're all filthy dirty. That certainly sounds like a nice departure from any royal pretensions. Kate Middleton and Prince William like to get away with their family when they can take a break from royal duties. Sometimes, the vacations are outright fabulous. The Prince and Princess of Wales love the Caribbean island of Mustique, according to The Sun, and they've used it as a favourite vacation spot since 2008, back when they were still dating. The privacy of the island means that they can relax away from the spotlight. Prince George celebrated his sixth birthday in Mustique in a private villa they rented for two two weeks of sun and fun. The villa costs over 30,000 US dollars a week to rent. Meanwhile, the couple also love to ski in France at Cochevel with their kids, per Hello magazine. However, they keep things a little more royal for vacations closer to home. The late Queen Elizabeth II loved the Scottish estate Balmoral, and William and Kate often visited her in the summer. Royal biographer Ingrid Seward told The Sun, Balmoral is absolute paradise paradise for children. They can do all the country things, swimming and fishing in the locks, and George might even go rabbit and grouse shooting with William. Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis began attending Lambrook School in the fall of 2022, right before their great-grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II, died. The new school was a result of their family's move to Adelaide Cottage on the grounds of the Windsor Estate after moving away from Kensington Palace and the thrum of London. Tuition for the school ranges on the age of the child, the US son pointed out, but all told, William and Kate were said to be paying over 58000 
thousand US dollars annually to send their three kids to the exclusive school. Two of Queen Victoria's grandsons previously attended Lambrook, so the royal children are even carrying on a family lineage. Education at Lambrook goes beyond basic curriculum, however. The royal children, along with their classmates, will learn about beekeeping and have access to a dance studio and a performing arts centre, which will include music and acting. The royal presence at Lambrook hasn't been a welcome experience for all, though. Some of the parents, per Express, are reportedly upset by all of the attention Lambrook is now receiving, thanks to such famous pupils, and worry that the privacy of the school will be compromised. While Lambrook School offers a boarding option, Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis live at home in Adelaide Cottage with parents Kate Middleton and Prince William, making them day students. This has marked a departure from more traditional royal ways. As the Evening Standard noted, the royal family have typically sent their children off to boarding school at eight years old. William himself was sent to boarding school at this age, attending Ludgrove School in Berkshire, according to Hello! magazine, as was his brother. Prince Harry. King Charles III also attended boarding school, first at Cheam Preparatory School in Berkshire and later in Scotland at Gordonston. According to BBC News, the story is that Charles was very unhappy at boarding school, particularly the latter. He once told The Observer, I didn't enjoy school as much as I might have, but that was only because I'm happier at home than anywhere else. For the Wales children, then, this move has not only been a major break in tradition, they're also said to be staying closer to their parents and leaving the hubbub of London because they vastly prefer doing family activities in the country. An insider told People, They are such an outdoorsy family, London just wasn't working for them anymore. The countryside is definitely their happy place. Prince George's birthdays have been memorable since the beginning. For the little heir's third birthday, Dad Prince William joked that his son might be overly indulged. In Portsmouth, England, at the America's Cup World Series of Yacht Racing, William was asked what presents George had recently received. According to E! News, William answered, I am not telling. He got too many things. He's far too spoiled. Princess Charlotte hasn't fared too badly either. The former president of Mexico, Enrique Peña Nieto, for example, gave Charlotte a rattle worth $44,000 for her first birthday. The rattle was made of white gold, bejeweled in rubies, sapphires and diamonds, according to Hello! magazine. Meanwhile, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau gifted her a book and snowsuit, as well as donated 100,000 Canadian dollars to immunize Canada in her honor, according to BBC News. While the rest of the the world steps up in terms of gifts, Kate Middleton keeps things a little more homemade for her children's birthdays. In 2019, Kate Middleton said to chef Mary Berry on the BBC's A Berry Royal Christmas, I love making the cake. It's become a bit of a tradition that I sort of stay up until midnight with ridiculous amounts of cake mix and icing. I make far too much, but I love it. It's pretty clear at this point that the royal kids get thoroughly celebrated on their big days. When your great-grandmother is the late Queen Elizabeth II, celebrity friends seem par for the course. When Prince George was only three, he met former President Barack Obama and then First Lady Michelle Obama. When the world leaders came to Kensington Palace to have dinner with Prince William, Princess Kate and Prince Harry, George came out to greet the famous couple in his pyjamas and a bathrobe and briefly rode a rocking horse. The Obamas gave George a stuffed animal of a Portuguese water dog, their family's favourite breed. In September 2020, George and his two younger siblings, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis, all got to meet environmentalist and narrator Sir David Attenborough. The beloved voice of planet Earth came to Kensington Palace and met the whole family. Hello David Attenborough, what animal do you think will become extinct next? Well let's hope there won't be any. William and Kate Middleton shared the sweet meeting on Instagram, explaining in the post that Attenborough was there to discuss the Earthshot Prize, the environmental prize that William has initiated through the Royal Foundation. But Attenborough also came bearing gifts. He gifted George with a tooth from a giant shark called a Carcarilles Megalodon. The Instagram post read, Sir David found the tooth in the late 1960s, embedded in the island's soft yellow limestone, 
which was laid down during the Miocene period some 23 million years ago. Carcharales is believed to have grown to 15 metres in length, which is about twice the length of the Great White. With all the family's royal tours, it only makes sense that Prince William and Kate Middleton's children have trotted around the globe a considerable amount for such young kids. When Prince George was one, for example, he tagged along on his parents' royal tour of Australia and New Zealand, according to People. A nanny accompanied the family, and of the whole trip, George and his parents only spent a couple of nights apart, according to The Guardian. Interestingly, the trip required special permission from the late Queen Elizabeth II. Part of royal protocol prohibits two heirs to travel together on the same plane in case something happens, meaning that William and George should have travelled separately. However, the Queen allowed it for this trip. Princess Charlotte also got a taste for travel at an early age. In September 2016, she joined her older brother and parents on a royal tour of Canada and played with children of Canadian military members. After Charlotte and George made new Canadian friends, an insider told People, the children have good fun together. They are brilliant kids, very playful and cheerful. When the children don't get to accompany their parents on royal tours, they have an adorable way of staying close. For example, when William and Kate toured the Caribbean in 2022, the former explained, according to People, we let them know where we are, and George finds us on a map and puts a pin in it and shares with the others. It's not just William and Kate who dote on their three children. All of their extended relatives are very involved and devoted to the kids. Carol Middleton is famously a hands-on grandmother to the brood, along with Pippa Middleton's children too. In a 2021 interview with Good Housekeeping, Carol spoke of how much she engages with her grandkids. She told the outlet, I want to run down the hills, climb the trees, and go through the tunnel at the playground. As long as I'm able to, that's what I'll be doing. Doing. I cook with them, I muck around dancing, we go on bike rides. Even the late Queen Elizabeth II was a doting and constant presence in the lives of her great-grandchildren, and when they would come stay with her, she made sure that there was always a little gift in their rooms. According to People, adorably, as Kate Middleton once shared, they called her Gangan. George was saying he'd two and a half, he calls her Gangan. King Charles III also dotes on his grandchildren. According to a later publication by People, he had William and Prince Harry's treehouse at Highgrove House fixed up for Prince George, Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis. An insider told the outlet, Charles is a warm and caring guy, but he comes even more alive around little George. He loves spending time with him. Clearly, the three Wales children are sources of joy to everyone in the family.